to the paper, the grass is always green. I don't do no labels, I call it how I see it. Uh. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of No Label Convo. Here with my boy, Nell. Yo. Shouts out to everybody that's subscribing on YouTube as normal, liking on Instagram, sharing, following. Follow us on Twitter at No Label The Pod, Facebook, No Label The Podcast. Now, let's get to the sponsor. Yeah, shout out to our sponsor. Shout out to Guapcoin. Guapcoin. Crypto for the culture, you know what I'm saying? I don't know too many other black-owned cryptocurrencies, uh, so we see how much it's moving. I mean, we might as well support our own. Shoot, but today we sitting down with one of the hidden hands of Buffalo's music scene. You know what I'm saying? She 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 been breaking out lately. You know what I mean? Spotlight's been on her. No pun intended. Uh, <laughs> nah, I've been I've been knowing that for a while, and man, she always had her hand in dope stuff, and it's, we seeing the fruits of her labor now. Uh, what's up? What's up, Neff? How you doing? Hey y'all! I couldn't wait to get on this. <laughs> I, I can't curse. Can yeah, I curse? you can. Oh, I can't wait to get on this bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> no label podcast. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, first of all, how, how are you? I am amazing. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like at this point in my life where like things are starting to like make sense. Like my position was like always there for me, but like it's really starting to make sense. Mm. Like it's starting to be like, yeah, this is what you was made to do. So yeah, I feel good about that. That's what's up. That's a beautiful thing. So how, well, how long have you been in the art space? Like, um, I have been doing things since two thousand and thirteen. Okay. Yep, I've been doing things since two thousand and thirteen. Like I came in the scene around that time, and I tried to do my first spotlight show in two thousand and thirteen. So. Word. I would start from when I did my first show, which was then. How did the first show turn out? It was all right. <laughs> you know what? To be honest with you, um, you know what? I hate to say that because it, it, it was okay to me. Like, because I've grown, you look back and be like, dang, like, what mm. was going on? But, like, the people who actually showed up and did what they were supposed to do, it was fire. Like, when I think about it, it's like they showed up and they showed out, not because... They just wanted to perform, but like they did it for me. Like we fuck mm -hmm. with you, so we're gonna make sure that this is a good show. Whether it's five people, two people, some of the artists that I had on the bill didn't show up, so the ones who did mm -hmm. was like, it don't even matter. Yeah, get extra time and yeah. all. That. They love yeah. that. Nah, that's that's one thing I think that's super dope. Like when I hear people doing it for a while, like it's twenty twenty two. Like spotlight. When when did spotlight pick back up? Like around twenty twenty one. Yeah, twenty twenty one. So it's like it is. It took eight years to I mean to grow into what people seeing it now. And it's like everybody. Oh, I want to do a spotlight series. Yeah. And it's like yo, this is eight years in the making. Don't think it's so <laughs> over. Right. And thing. it took it took a lot um, because after the first one, I was discouraged. I really was. Like mm. I have like went in like a little corner because at the time, like at the time, a lot of people was doing stuff, and I was like new. So like. Coming in there and just being like, hey, you guys, I know y'all, y'all my friends, but like, I want to throw a show. They was like, ah, okay. Because they didn't really know what I was capable of. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, really, the people who really knew what it was like was the Slime Shack, like Cooley High, because those was like my brothers. Mm -hmm. But everybody on the outside that I didn't know on a friend level, but like a music level was like, who is this girl coming in? We have been doing shows. Like, yeah. this is what we do. And she asking us to do a show. So I felt like I wasn't taken seriously so like I went into like this dang like I don't know maybe I don't want to do this maybe I don't but like I don't know and then I got kids so like that was also another thing I'm like I'm doing this and then I have children like I just was trying to find my place mm -hmm. and then one day I just was like fuck that like because <laughs> you when you're not living in your purpose or you're not doing what you want to do you're truly never happy like mm -hmm. you could convince yourself a hundred times like oh, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. This is too much for me. But, like, if that's your path, God going to keep putting you in this position where you, like, get led right back. Mm -hmm. And I feel like every day that I was sitting at the nursing home or every day I was at this new job trying to figure things out, I would be thinking of shows like, oh, that would be dope if I did that. <laughs> but let me get back to changing this, this brief real quick because yeah. I got to get this money. But I, I feel like I'm in my purpose and I can't fight it no more, so I'm going all in. Like, Word. That's a beautiful thing. Was was a slime shack the first like 
artists that you like cultivated around and was like, okay, I'm gonna help these people? Yes, yes. So um, I went to middle college high school in Jordan, Cooley. Shout out to my brother Cooley. Shout out to her. I, I met him in high school and I used to like try to skateboard all the time. So like Cooley was like into all that cool kid shit. Like he mm-hmm. didn't have like no type of like, oh, you got on Jordan, so you cool. Like he just fucked with everybody. Everybody fucked with Cooley. So um, one day he just was like, yo, you got to come hang out with me because you really dope. Like when I was in high school, I used to like make my own magazines and I used to like give them to people at school. Like read this, read this. How you feel about that? I had this crazy obsession about Bow Wow. So everybody knew <laughs> you couldn't talk about Bow Wow or I'm blowing the whole school up. Everybody knew that. <laughs> so like... I would take like Word Up magazines and like cut them and then put the pictures that they already had and then I would put my own captions and the own things my own things I wanted to say about them and I just knew that I always wanted to throw concerts and be like this music agent. Mm. So he recognized that. He came up to me and was like, "Dude, I hang out with a whole bunch of dope ass people. You should come meet my friends." Mm. And I I took him up on his his, you know, oh, and he was and here comes Gaines, here comes Skate, here comes Tony Boy like just history in the making when I met them and skate was like oh yeah I heard you know how to skateboard he tried to teach me how to skateboard and we we became close like that and then Gaines when I met skate skate was just like the cool kid like you know what I'm saying he wasn't really rapping as much what's like, crazy is I've never seen skate on a skateboard what I mean, I've never <laughs> seen skate on a skateboard <laughs> and he really know how to skate yeah. like he really know how to skate <laughs> he would take me up and down dope and just try to Teach me how to like really, really like master it. But in the hood. Though. Yes, yes. <laughs> and hood. I bust my ass one good time and I was like, never again. I can't. I can't. He was there when I did it too. But I'm get, Skate was just that person for me, like that cool, like that cool dude. He was about money. Like, I just mm-hmm. want to give me some money. He only rapped for fun at that point. Gaines. Gaines was Gaines was like, when I met Gaines, Gaines was writing. A, like, he, when I first met him, he was writing a rap. And he was like, you got to hear my music. Like, I'm pretty dope. They was telling me he was cool. And I was like, okay. And then Tony Boy was just always in charge. Like, he just was always an in charge dude. So they started to take me to their shows. Like, they was my crew now. Like, this is my crew. They start taking me to the shows. And then that's when, like, the first classes, the short Moscatos start showing. Mm -hmm. I always knew True EV before I knew Gaines in them. Mm -hmm. Because, like... Like, I kind of, like, not grew up with Truy, but, like, Truy dated a young lady that I was close to. Mm-hmm. So, like, he was always around, and that's how I met him. Gotcha. So, like, he was always around. So, when I seen him in the scene, it was, like, my peoples was, like, coming in. So, like, yeah, that's that's how I got into, like, the scene with them. So, th- I would give them ideas about things that they should do. Like, kind of, like... <laughs> artist development like I would give my my ideas and my points and that's where spotlight came from I went up to Tony Boy one day and was like hey listen I I really want to do something and I went up to Tony Boy because like I said he always was like the businessman like he was the one yeah he talked to everybody know everybody know the venues and all of that the DJs Mm -hmm. so I went up to him and I was like hey listen I want to I want to throw a show and he was like all right cool I gave him the lineup of what I wanted to do he helped me reach out to everybody Mike Excel prime example um, who else did I have? I had some cool people there. Um, uh, Dr. Oo. Dr. Oo. Dr. Oo is hard. Dr. Oo, I love you, Dr. Oo. I love you. Who is that? Dr. I don't know who that is. Yo, like, Fire. Yo, he looked like a college professor. He walk up looking all nerdy, then he get to rapping. Hit, oh, I'm crazy. It, listen, you would see him and you would not think At what all. came out of his mouth is what did. But he be like, he really got bars though, like... I want. I say I DJ one show tone. I DJ uh, show at Melky's. Mm-hmm. First show, first show I ever DJ was like Doctor Ooze. Last show, first, <laughs> first, first and last, last show. <laughs> so it was Doctor Ooze. I can't even remember who else was on there. I think uh, Rich Slaves might have been on there. Rich Slaves, shout out to Rich Slaves. I yeah, fuck with them too. But yo, that was a dope. I remember that. Yeah. So it Ooze like performance was crazy. It was lit. It was super lit. And Tony Boy was like, "All right, cool. What do you want to call it?" So I named it the Spotlight series like I named it the spotlight series my first ever show came out with the flyer and I had I had well fed on there well fed was on there truly was on there uh first class was on there Dr. O Mike Excel and prime example those was my people mm-hmm. so of uh, well fed didn't show up nobody from first class showed up to my oh, wow. no Truly V up. didn't come like he <laughs> That's he crazy. didn't come so it was cool though but the people who did and of course Cooley High was on there mm. they, of course they bodied it so everybody just did a good job and 
Tony Boy was just like, man, like, whatever you want to do, just always let me know what you want to do. I'll help you. If I could get you there, if I could point you in the direction, I always got you. Gaines always told me he had me. He was, like, my first artist that I was able to, like, practice on because he always took my ideas and was like, okay. Like, okay, we could do that. Okay, right. we could do that. Like, just my family. And Cooley was always the creative director. So if I that's... came up with something, he always enhanced it. Like, okay, yeah, that's cool. But what if you added this to this? And yeah. I used to be like, my boy. Yeah, so who, that's how who it got went. that eye? Who, who yeah. got that vision? Love y'all, boys, man. Shout out to Slime Shack. Always in my heart, my brothers. Word. I bleed slime. <laughs> <laughs> Where okay, so boom, that starts kicking off. When did you uh? When did you link up with Hosanna Hitch? My dog. Um, he started showing up at the anti venue uh shows. Like, really? yeah, he did anti venue before he was. I'm I was a- even his manager. Okay, I I don't know. I thought y'all knew each other before, but like type or, it because I'm, I'm thinking about when he was doing uh when the song Hosanna came out. It was already out when I met him. Uh. Like it was it was like already planned. Like he had already dropped that project. I was meeting him like when that was like put out, and everybody was like, "Did you hear that? Yeah. Did you ever hear a whole hitch, Bernie? Did you hear?" So he performed with True V at DBGB's. That was mm-hmm. the first time I ever seen him. Like. I never heard, but I seen him at DBGB's and I was like, oh man, this kid is super dope. We connected and he played more music for me and more music for me. And then he, I guess he really appreciated like my, mm. my verbiage towards like what he had going on and telling what I want to do. So he like, yo, you want to manage me? And I was like, I was kind of nervous because I'm <laughs> like, I don't know. I ain't never managed nobody. He was like, fuck it. We going to do this shit. Like whatever it is. So he winded up letting me manage him, and our first event that we ever did was um, at A3C. Like we went to A3C together in Atlanta, wow. yeah, and he had like he had like a little show on like the little strip. You know how you get like the silo shows. Mm-hmm. We did another show there, or whatever the case may be, at like this mansion. I remember Truy was there, Love was there. Like we just was just Buffalo kids in Atlanta, just doing whatever. And he gave me my first first opportunity to be a manager. Then after that. Shit got crazy. We did City of God. Everybody came to City of God. <laughs> Shit was nuts. The whole room was red. We did it in this like place that this dude like owned that he really didn't give a fuck about it. So he didn't care if we fucked it up because Hitch made sure to let he was like, make sure you let them know we gonna fuck this shit up as long as they okay with that. And he was okay with that. So then that that's how it went. Like we just started moving and shaking and going to shows and things start moving. And once they seen that me and Hitch was on the scene together like that, mm. everybody was like, Neff, you wanna be my manager? Neff, you wanna be my manager? And I just was like, nope. <laughs> so here. It's lit. So that's how me and Hitch got together. We just we met that one night at DBGB's and like after that I started listening to his music and he just was like, yo, like I fuck with how you what you talking about, like the yeah. way you move, be my manager. That's how it went. Yeah, and it's such a needed thing. And shit, just in hip hop, our culture period, just like having somebody who can help organize the talent that's mm-hmm. already there. Like I say it all the time, Buffalo got some of the best talent in the world. We just, we lack a little bit of the organization part. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing I feel like no label that we do, we help create a little immediate outlet mm-hmm. for it and uh, Betty Crocker Entertainment, you know what I'm saying? All Appreciate of that. y'all. It's that platform. It's that platform that you provide. Like that's exactly what I just be trying to do all the time is to provide a platform for people to be whoever they need to be, who they want to be, and to tell their story. That's exactly what Spotlight Series is. That's like the definition, to provide a platform for people to tell their stories where there's no openers, no closers. It's just about you. And all I do is give it to you and you tell me how you want it. That's basically how I go. That's fire. Who was your first artist when you brought Spotlight Series back last year? Kane motherfucking wave. <laughs> Shout out to Kane. Kane. Shout out to Kane. I told Kane about the idea and Kane was like, oh yeah, I, I would love to do it. And I'm like, Kane, you know, it's my my first show back like from being out. Like, cause I took like a little hiatus. I was mm-hmm. out and I was like, you know, this is my first show. He was like, Nev, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna support you. I'm always gonna be there for you. I'm gonna do this show for you, whether it's five, two people, and we gonna rock it out. And he did my first show and had the most fucking people. Kane had the most people. That's hard. First show, he had the most people. The sound wasn't great, but it was the beginning, and he was so cool about it. Like, I don't care, Neff. Like, I'm okay that I was your first person. So shout out to Kane Wade for always Word. fucking that's, with me. That's fire. What's the name? Even I want to tap in a little bit on the. You mentioned anti venue. Yeah. How did you? How did you link up with? Anti-venue and Holt Levy and all of that. So, um, like I said, uh, 
Hitch was already a part of Anti Venue. I was just a goer mm. when it first started going on. So um, when I started to manage Hitch, Hitch was still doing Anti Venue shows because you know it used to be all over the place in different, mm, different space, cities. unconventional spaces and stuff. No, when it started going to different cities, I had got on it. Oh, yeah, but yeah, at yeah, this that's... point, it was just like a local thing where they would just do pop ups at different. Spaces like food spots, like people backyards. Okay. Hitch did one at his house. Like it was crazy. So when I started to manage Hitch, Hitch had told me that uh, Sean, mm -hmm. um, shout out to Sean, he uh, wanted to speak to me and he wanted to come over. So he came and he met me at Hitch house and he was like, I hear a lot about you. Everybody is like validating you. Like I, I hear that you friends with everybody, you connected with everybody and you manage him and y'all like really moving and I fuck with you. I would like you to come do something for uh, anti-venue. And I'm like, okay, because I'm already a goer. I'm already a fan of what they're doing. It was crazy. My artist is already performing in the show. So mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, cool, whatever. He was like, I want you to like a, be the A&R. Like, I want you to run the background. Since you're so connected to each artist, I want you to like like book the line. Like, I want you to set which artist is going to be the headliner, who's going to do this, and I want you to run the whole entire back. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's nothing. I yeah. got I got the folks for you. Like, mm -hmm. what? So I started to pick and choose who performed an anti-venue. So I just ran the whole back. So when he winded up giving me that job, we winded up doing, like, a show or two in Buffalo. And then we was like, okay, we're going to take it on tour. And then I added the A-team. And shout out to the A-team because I right, manage the A-team now. Like, the band. Right. Yeah, I'm the manager mm -hmm. now. So I'm back to managing the A-team. Come on them um but i was like i told sean like let's put the a team on board like you know what i'm saying but at the time they named they didn't even have a name we was calling them the waves at the time <laughs> i don't know who i don't know who made up the waves maybe it was sean i don't know it wasn't me but he made up the waves i and, like the a team better <laughs> they made it up they made up the a team fire fire like i said shout out to the a team up, we gotta get them up here okay, yes get my boys up here it's get my boys up show. here best band in the town to me my favorites they um, up there. It's it's them. It's them and free music. Yeah, free favorite. music party is fire. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So that's how. And then we started to go on tour. So like, then Hitch and um a couple people stopped doing anti venue. I I had stopped being Hitch manager at the time, and I just kept going on with anti venue. So my last show with anti venue was when we brought Conway, when we did the Conway show in West Side Boogie. So that was yeah. my last. one. Okay, yeah, I remember that show. That show was that show was dope, and I remember that was like the first time black people I can think of was in that venue, or they welcomed like hip hop in. It. I think they used to have little parties and stuff there mm -hmm. every now and then, mm -hmm. but never never a concert. It's a perfect spot for one, but I don't, I don't get into that venue, the venue idea. Mm -hmm. But like, what's what was some of your like biggest? like struggles with managing and learning managing an artist? Um, so I would say my biggest struggle with managing artists is like the creative vision that the artists have. Sometimes when you're a manager, you struggle with connecting with your artist, like only because they have a vision, right? And they really strong on it. And they have to really, really trust you. Like mm -hmm. if they're not giving you 100% trust, it's like a pull, push situation. Like... Like, I know you have the vision. I know where you're going. But, like, a lot of the times artists be wanting you to skip certain steps. They be wanting you to be like, you're the manager. What are you doing? Like, or they want you to zoom past certain steps that you can't necessarily zoom past. Every every artist is different. Every person is different. Like, some artist is going to get up off of being on social media and only doing one retarded song that everybody just chant from time to time. And then some people really have to do the work. Like, you know what I'm saying? And me being an up-and-coming manager with an up-and-coming artist, sometimes I feel like the artist lose the vision that she's up-and-coming too. Like, we mm. both in this shit together yeah, type we, shit. we learning together. Right, we learning together. Like, so was immediately when they hire you as the manager, they think that you're supposed to know everything. I, I wasn't from a label. Like, I didn't yeah. already make it. Like, this was something that I was learning as I went. So, like... The frustration would be timing, like, what are you doing? Like, why is this taking so long? And it would be like, no, nigga, like, we got to, we, like, <laughs> you know, we you know, getting there, but, like. You know how many people I had to call? <laughs> yeah, we don't have right? Resources you know what like I'm that. saying? Like, I'm sending out, I'm sending out emails, and then, like, now, at this point, I'm learning how to get in contact with certain people in a different way. But back then, we was emailing people, trying to figure out, we emailing blogs, the emails wasn't even correct. It was mad shit we was going through at that time. Like, mm -hmm. so, like, that was the struggle, like, the. 
like the what are you doing like and and I could do this shit myself if you're not gonna do it on time and your artist cutting over you and you like nigga like what are you doing but like I said it was like you have to have patience you have to I feel like you have to reassure your artist that I'm managing you because I believe in you. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. if you're not a fire artist or if I don't believe in what you have going on, then what's the point? Where are we Literally, going? Where yeah. am I taking you? So at the same time, just believe in me because I'm going to get you where you got to go. Like, nigga, I'm trying to cut corners, of course, but like if I can't cut that corner, I just can't. And we got to figure out this spot and you have to be patient. But in the meantime, get that motherfucking music going. Do your part and cook, let me do my part. Yo, you feel what I'm cook saying? Cook up as much as possible. And we'll once it's cooked, right. then we can figure out how we're going to set the table, how we're going to prepare it. Because I may change, you may change mm -hmm. the type of little dining room, right. little trinkets around it based on the music. I feel like that's something that gets lost is like people want, I don't say like a one size fits all type of thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, if you okay, if you want some cookie cutter, like regular stuff, then yeah, that can be done. Mm -hmm. But it's like if you really care about your art and like that's this is what you're trying to push and you believe in, it has to be done yeah. a certain way. Yeah, you can't I agree. Cut corners for sure. I agree. I had a really great managing experience with Hitch though because I felt like he like eight different people in one. So like you get a different person from him all the time. So like. He he already had the vision and he already had the idea. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He was he was a photographer at a point, a videographer, an artist. Like he did so much stuff. So he he knew what he wanted to do. So I would literally follow his like follow his direction, but I would still have to like learn certain like management you know, traits, like, okay, I'm following your lead, I know your lane, I know you know what you're doing, but okay, it's my job to make sure that we get there. So like that I, I appreciated him for like showing me things and like showing me certain type of finesse shit. Like, nah, Neff, we not paying to get in there. Like, fuck mm -hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so that's what I used to learn that rebel shit from him. But mm -hmm. yeah, I had a lot of learning experiences. That's dope. Now, is there a difference between managing like a solo artist like Hitch and like now managing a band? Oh, it's totally different. So, what, it's, do, you, what do you think are the differences? The difference is is that I'm managing like more than one person at a time. I'm dealing with three. People, personalities, three different personalities, like three different visions. You know what I'm saying? They all go into the same place, but they still have their own mind on how they want things to be ran. You know what I'm saying? They have a real brotherhood, though. I could say that about them. Mm -hmm. Like they could argue, they could fight, but they really brothers at the end of the day. So it like really don't matter at the end of the day. They still show up and show out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's so point. like that's the difference. And in managing one person, you only concerned about that one person at one way like you know what i'm saying so like and you got to keep track of three different people with three different lives like you know what i'm saying just to set up a meet and they be like why well, i ain't available on thursday well i am and i am but i'm not so we gotta you be like dude mm -hmm. send the schedule nigga like, <laughs> send the schedule and let me know that's when we fact. gonna get together you know what i'm saying that's a fact but yeah that that would be the difference just the amount of people and i have to learn the equipment what they need that yeah. that's a big one because I don't yeah. know nothing about versus, instruments. Yeah, versus a solo act and like a band, yeah. you gotta have the midis. You gotta all that. you gotta have the the certain microphones for the bass and the kicks and all, all of that. The drum the drummer alone gonna have at least like three four mics. All of that. You know I gotta make sure venues have certain shit now. Mm -hmm. Like at first it was just an artist coming. We just needed our microphone, yeah, our sound our check. Our, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Now I have to make sure that my band is like fully equipped and I'm learning like. Mad shit. They be saying like, "Oh, Neff, do they got this?" I'd be like, "I don't, I don't even know what that is." Like, <laughs> writers, you gotta I don't have the know. writers, right? But, I don't know. Like, you know, a lot of times, like you see uh, artists if I have wild requests, like, "Oh, mm -hmm. I need twenty seven Fiji waters and a flamingo, <laughs> nothing but orange, <laughs> nothing but orange flamingo, Skittles, flamingo next to a cheese plate." It was like when well, we got a band. It's like, no, we got very specific equipment. Like, yo, my guitar will not play on anything else. It will not sound like it's supposed to sound if right. I don't have this. And it's like that. And I could think it sound amazing. They'd be like, nope, that don't sound right. Yeah. I'd be like, well shit, would have got me. Yeah man. Yeah, it's a it's a different it's a different beast. And another thing, I shout out to the eighteen because they are like like spiritually inclined. Like I appreciate like how they love God so much. Like they'll be like, nope, before we start this meeting we gotta pray. I'd be fine. like 
(laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, I'll be looking around like, oh, I feel like a heathen. Let me go ahead. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? They just, I don't know, just different experiences that I'm having. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, because like, like I, I've I've done do management stuff with my brother, mm-hmm. and it's so much like I'm super big on like I don't want to work with other artists. Like right. I'm like if you you got to have some type of spiritual connection in order for me to even consider working with you, yeah. or I even have to I have to hear it through your music that yeah. you have this type of connection. Yes, because any anything else is like people be so in love with the lights, like in love with they they want to just sit in front of the camera, or they just want to mm-hmm. be on the stage. Right. That attention and it's like it's so much more outside of that. You're gonna be on stage for an hour. Right. You're gonna be on stage for an hour. I'm not doing all this work all day, every day. Right. For this hour of no, what, I, you, what the only thing that you want. You know, you know I what I'm you know like, I get I it. Yeah, I can't I can't get with that. Shout out to Gino too. That's Word. my brother. That's a fact. That's a fact. The so right now, okay, so you went we went through anti venue. Um, and during your experience with anti venue, were you still kind of having that experience? Like now that you're touring, right? Yeah, I did the tour. Mm-hmm. Were you having those say, like as a woman being on the road with pretty much all guys? Mm-hmm. What What was your experience with that? Was it tougher for you in the industry of like tour managing type thing? Mm, honestly, no, because um, at this point, I felt like everybody had like a nice respect for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm not a type of person that's just going to sit back and just allow myself to be, like, in a corner. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, I was meeting these niggas halfway. Like, what are you talking about right now? Like, get your ass on stage. I'm not coming outside to because you smoking (laughs) in the car, nigga. We will skip over you. Like, I was was meeting them that way. So, like, I, like, that respect was given back. Like, oh, shit, here come Neff. Come on, y'all. We got to go on stage. Put it out. Put it out. We got to go on stage. So, it was like, it was like a mutual... Like, respect. So, like, I would say that particular tour, like, it was great. Like, everybody respected me. Everybody listened. And I think it was because I had put my foot down. Like, I wasn't going to allow nothing else. Like, mm-hmm. nothing else. I, I didn't mind speaking up and playing my position. Like, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. That's what I'm here to do. It's going to get done. Where, and that's one thing I admired about you is, like, how, how well respected you were amongst, like, the guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, it's like, it's that's not... Some some people said like that's not like an easy feat. That's not it doesn't come easy to them. But it's like seeing that it's possible and it's like it ain't gotta be nothing weird. It's like, no, this is this is Neff. Like and she holds it down. Like I be about no, my business and yeah. I and I feel like like I I always cut to the chase. Like it's always like when I come around, I be hanging out. Like I hang out with the bros all the time, but it's too much money in this room, nigga. Like when I look around and I see my friends, like my friends that I look at, when I look at Gaines, when I when I see the Billy Escos and I see everybody that's in the room, like, it's fun and games, but, like, nigga, it's money in this room. That's like, right. did you just hear the project that you dropped, nigga? Did you just see what you did? Like, I don't want to talk about nothing else. What's the next thing? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because that's my visual. So I think that that's why they respect me, because it was never not a time. I was at the Slime Shack chilling. We all drinking, chilling or whatever. Then all of a sudden, Neff would be like, yo... What are we doing next? Like, what's mm-hmm. going on? Like, I'm keeping niggas in that vision. Like, no, let, like we let's not forget because we we chilling. Mm-hmm. And Skate was always on that shit too. Skate will always meet me halfway. Like, yep, sis, what we about to do? Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So I think that's what it was. Like, cause they be like, damn, nigga, we just trying to drink. You still trying to talk? Yes. Yeah, not not just being around <laughs> to be around type mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. Nah, so. yeah, that shit is key. That shit is definitely key. Oh, can you tell us about? Um, can you tell us about Betty Crocker? Betty Croc Entertainment? Yes, Betty Croc Entertainment. That's my baby. So Betty Croc came from my rap name. Like, so when I used hold to be- on, Hold on, hold on, We can't skip that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had bars at some point. Yes, yes. No, wait. I had bars. I used to play around and rap with my friend Brandy on at the time. Me and her we used to pick beats off of YouTube. Okay. And I used to have my friends come over. And we used to be like, yo, we made a song. Listen to it. And they would listen to it. It used to be all play. But one day, niggas was like- Oh, that song was kind of fire. Like, so they was like, What's your rap name? And I was like, Fuck it, I'm Betty Croc because I'm in the kitchen. Just some funny shit. <laughs> and they was like, No, nigga, you Betty. Like, <laughs> fuck that, you Betty. So I I winded up being Betty Croc. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then all of a sudden I was when I was thinking about coming up with my business, I was sitting down with Cooley at Jess House. Shout out to Jess, Arm Candy. Shout out to Jess. Shout out to Jess. Shout out to Jess. That's my baby. 
Jess is my baby. We was at her house and we was talk I was talking about starting my business. And I'm like, I want my own shit. Like I'm on a new level. I'm going in in the living room, like, fuck this. I want my own shit. I don't work for nobody no more. I want to throw my own shows, whatever. And they just was like, well, what you gonna call it? So we started thinking of all types of shit. I like planning it. So I'm like, oh, what about this? What about that? And they was like, nah, nah, nah. And then Cooley was like, nigga, Betty Croc, nigga, Betty Croc Entertainment. And I was like, yeah. I be cooking up mad shit. Like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. So then I really ran with Betty Crock Entertainment. And um, he asked me, he was like, so tell me, Cooley was like, tell me, so what is Betty Crock Entertainment? Because the name is cool, but nigga, if they ask you, what is it? And I just literally want Betty Crock Entertainment to be like a fucking outer body experience. Like, throwing shows is easy. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's not too easy because not everybody could do it, but it's easy for me. Right, so it's easy to come to a regular show when you come in and you got your performers or whatever. But what is gonna make me different? Like, what? Why do I want people to come to my events? Mm-hmm. Like, what do I want them to walk out saying? Like, kind of like, like Astro World style. Like, how can I enhance the aesthetic? Like, how can yeah. niggas come to my show and be like, yo, when I was there, nigga, I really felt like I was outer space. Yeah, selling experience. Yeah, like I want to sell an experience. So that's why. Shout out to Oscar. I um hire Oscar as my creative director, because when I first met Oscar, Oscar house was like to a T and I'm like, damn, like even down to his clothes, he just got to be a certain type of way. And I was, we talked about what he wanted to do. And I'm like, Hey, would you mind like creating that aesthetic on my stage? Like just bringing something different. And he was like, Oh yeah, of course. So he did it for me. And then from then he just keep throwing ideas and ideas and ideas about how we could make it different. So I just want people to have Betty Croc Entertainment is about having an experience. Like when you leave, I want you to really feel like you was somewhere that you wasn't. You in Buffalo, but if I wanted to provide that platform that you was in Mexico, I really want you to feel like you was in Mexico. And then you're gonna leave and be like, damn, we gotta go to the next one. Cause mm-hmm. the next theme is fucking whatever, fucking <laughs> what you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like that's what I wanna do. When I get there financially, y'all not going to be able to fuck with me. Just letting y'all know. That's a fact. I have so many ideas. Like, I'm going to do a show in a dome one day, and this shit's going to be nuts. I already know. Yeah. I already know. Who else is a part of your team besides Oscar? So, my for Betty Croc Entertainment, because yeah. it's different for Spotlight Series. So, for Betty Croc, it's literally me, Oscar, and I just, just recruited JC. JC been helping me. And <laughs> then, I am JC. then my dog, Kayla. Kayla is going to be managing my events. Hey. Shout out to Kay. That's my baby. Yeah, so she's going to be managing my events, basically. She's going to be the one that when I actually have the show, she's running everything as far as making sure everybody's there, everybody's on time. Like, I literally want to be a boss. Like, when I, I just want to make sure that the show is going on, and when I get there, the shit is running. Like, I want to get to that point. Like, you know what I'm saying? So Oscar, of course, he's the creative director. He provides the aesthetic. He makes sure that whatever my vision is come to life. And then JC is going to help me with, like, marketing and, like, networking and, like, figuring out. Now, Spotlight Series is different. So Spotlight Series is me, Sneak Vibin', Chandra. Shout mm-hmm. out to... Shout out to Chandra. Chandra. Sneak vibe in. I, <laughs> Chandra, just want to make this confession to you, baby. I love you, girl. You is my dog. Like, Chandra, Chandra came in my life, and she told me I was her OG. She was like, you my OG. I heard so much about you. I said, how? She was like, you don't even know I've been waiting to meet you. And ever since I hooked up with Chandra, her, I feel like her motive has been to put me in the rooms that I've never been in before. Like, she know a lot of people that I don't know. I know the community. Mm. She know the people on the outside. So she was like, listen, sis, show up here. Do this. You got to mm. come here. I start shaking hands with college professors. Hey, I'm deaf. I don't even know how to explain who I am. Like, I'm just <laughs> like, hey, hi. So shout out to Chandra. And then it's Omri, Toonworks Media. He does, like, the production video. And shout all out that. to Toonworks. Yeah. That's so, hope. And you, 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 you mentioned your team. You got a solid team. It's so funny you mentioned... Uh, you mentioned JC because you know me. That's my brother. Mm-hmm. So I always wanted him to like really dive into his networking management mm. type bag. That's that's gonna be fire. Oh man, he that's already he already sent me this long old email on what to send out. Man, he, that's gonna. It's my dog. Yo, y'all team gonna be, y'all team is nice. I that's know, and it's team. getting really good. And um, I'm looking, I'm looking for like some cameramen for Betty Croc. Like we growing. Like I'm looking for somebody that's gonna really push my shit to the next level. Like if I could get somebody that could visually put my shit out there the way I needed to be, I feel like my shit would just really go up and be crazy. Like 
Hint, hint. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> just throwing it out there, like a foreign team member. <laughs> nah, that's fine. But so, okay, when did you? Um, I'm trying to think, because you teamed up with Chandra, you teamed up with them doing the. Uh, who y'all? Who y'all got next? Who y'all got next on the spotlight? AI, the anomaly, October 29th. Yeah. The lady is crazy. She's incredible. She's incredible. It's gonna be at Villa in the recital center. Um, yep, seven to nine for college kids is ten dollars, but you gotta show ID, don't try to blame me. And then for general admission is twenty. So yeah. Coffee. Yeah, so what's just, the process you go through for like picking an artist for Spotlight Series? It's really um so a lot of people hit me up all the time about wanting to be a part of Spotlight Series. So Spotlight Series is a little different. I'm really not looking for somebody cousin who know how to rap or sing. Like I'm like way past that point. Nothing against them. Like keep pushing. But like Spotlight Series is literally like me trying to do like my A&R work at the same time. Like I'm trying to put people out there. So like after you do a Spotlight Series, you go on to YouTube, right? So like I want my page to be a page that if somebody was looking for somebody, they could be like, yo, go on Spotlight Series. You probably could find you an artist on there. Like, you know what I'm saying? So whoever I pick is a reflection of me. Like and who, mm-hmm. what type of music I would listen to and how good of an ear I have. So like... The process is, like, if you have an EPK and you well put together and the city is saying, like, Neff, this, this is who we love. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And Spotlight Series is not to just stay in Buffalo. This is what we're doing right now. Like, of course, I'm going to start in my city. I want Spotlight Series to, like, branch out. and Because right now with Spotlight Series 716, I want to do a Spotlight Series 718, 213. Like, I want to be everywhere. Like, you know what I'm saying? But, like, when I pick my artist, you have to be a certain type of artist. I want you to have videos. I want you to have music. I want you to have, like, a team. I want you to be, like, professional. Like, I want you to bring your shit. Like, I want to be... How are you getting an interview if you only got one song out? That's what I'm saying. Like, how could I even get Chandra to interview you? Hey, clip that up. (laughs) Clip that up. Right. Like, how am I supposed to provide a platform for you not to say nothing? Like, I don't want you to say, yeah, I woke up and I did music yesterday. This is my song. Like, nah, that's not, that's not what I'm into. Like, I need you to be at least somewhat, you know, doing something for me Mm -hmm. to do that for you. So... That's what Spotlight Series is. That's the process. And a lot of people have been sending me their EPKs because I've been testing niggas too. Like, yo, they hit me up and I'd be like, send me your EPK. What's that? Now I don't hear from them for like a month and then now all of a sudden I got an EPK. I'm happy that you created one. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. You gotta be prepared. Put them onto that verbiage. Yeah. Electronic press kit. Get that. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Electronic press kit. Get that. So do you eventually want to do it more than once a month too? I do if I, I have to get a like a bit like a, a staff mm-hmm. because it's a lot with for just sure. the little like the little little team that I have like it's really a lot for us so like doing in when my promo game get up and like my shit get where I need it to be yes we could do more than one but right now we still kind of like pushing like one show at a time because we still moving like mm-hmm. we still getting it together we still getting the flow so yeah I do or that's gonna be hard and. I'm going to be doing more shows anyway, so sometimes I'm, I might can't do, like, a Spotlight Series twice. Like, I'll do a Spotlight Series, and then I'll do a show that's just Betty Crock Entertainment. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Like that. How was the uh, the show at Larkin Square? Bomb. Like, <laughs> it, and you know what? Oh, shout out to Harry from Larkin Square. He really, really fucked with us. Like, he really was like, whatever y'all need. Like, I'm around for y'all, so shout out to Harry from Larkin Square. I really appreciate you, like, a lot. He's, he kind of, like, still want to support, like, still trying to help me, like, figure out, like, a home for Spotlight Series, too. Mm-hmm. So, like, yeah, I built a lot of um, relationships with people, like like AI. Mm-hmm. Like, I built a really great um, relationship with AI. She was one of the sponsors for Spotlight Series. Um, Pineapple Co., like, um, Hugo Hurt, that's my mentor. Like, I... I got a lot of people that's behind me and like pushing me, like you know what I'm saying. I just want to get it right enough so that they could feel so confident in what they give me or if they put behind me. I want them to be like, oh yeah, every time, whatever you need. Word, that's fire. That's super dope. Um, who are some? Who are? I don't know if you want to disclose, but who are some future guests you see being on the Spotlight series that you haven't had yet? Um, free music party. That'd be hard. I'm That'd definitely be getting free music party. Plus, they they be creating their own setups and all that. Like they mm. backgrounds and aesthetics. That joint gonna be crazy. Oh man, I I definitely fuck with free music party. Um, Dre Cash, I want him bad. Mm-hmm. I'm pro- I'm gonna do my brother Rick High. He already told me he was gonna do one for me. We just gotta make sure like it's in good timing. Um, let me see. Who else? 
It's some more. It's, it's, it's a whole bunch of people that be hitting me up all the time that I be watching. I really, 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 really want some, some like, R&B love. Like, I want some more R&B, and I really want some more women. It's, like, it's mm. really hard for me to, like, grab some women to get on, like, Spotlight Series. So, like... Why do you think that is? I don't know. I just, like... Maybe I'm not put on to the women that's singing or doing whatever. Like that's how I be feeling, because like we we be looking for the women X, and it's like we we want. I want to see them get a little bit louder. Like, yeah, get like louder I want to hear media, it. Get more out. Get put yourself out there a little bit more so we can see. DM us a lot of a lot, and that's one thing I, I've talked to some some artists. A lot of artists are like afraid to like reach out to the. Media outlets because it's like, oh, you supposed mm-hmm. to see me and da 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 da. And it's like, no, it's okay to say hi to. <laughs> you know right, what I'm saying? Like, right. Yeah. It it makes it's like, oh, oh wow, you're you're welcoming. Let's word. Let's work. Mm-hmm. Is that it's it's. it's I want simple, some ladies. They could reach out to me. Hit me up. Hit up Nev. Hit up my hit up my DMs. Like go in there because I really am looking for some women. Like li- whether you sing, whether you rap, whatever. Like I'm really looking for some women to do something with, and I'm looking for. Just, I'm just looking for some real professional people that just want to work. I'm like I said, I'm not looking for nobody to be like, oh yeah, I got a cousin yeah. that do this. Like, no, I, I really want you to have some shit behind you. So, copy. So, uh, you got anything, Kimon? Did you have anything? Yeah, I got a couple. All right. So, like going back to the beginning, you guys said when you did your first show, there was like some artists that didn't show up though when you built. And then I told you that first class didn't show up. Uh-huh. Billy Billy Esco got a Larkin Square Spotlight series. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I don't hold no grudge. You know what I'm saying? Welcome to Larkin Square, Billy Esco. I wish mm-hmm. you would have did my first Spotlight series when I had you on the bill, but I'm not like that. Like, I really am for the culture. Like, yeah. I missed that because I didn't know who any of those people was when y'all was talking about them. First, oh, first, first, first like class, Billy first Esco, class, Billy skis. Esco, skis, Mitch Arizona. Uh, what'd you say? OG, was it OG So? OG So, yeah. OG, OG So. brother was an honorary member, right? Oh, uh, yeah, he was honorary. And that's why it's like, Buffalo, I'm realizing, like, Buffalo got so many, like, conglomerates coming at me. He loved me. I was like, 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 if you didn't step in, this ain't no arrogant, you know, arrogant nothing. If you didn't step in to do what you do for those groups, do you feel like they really would have been where they are today? Because I feel like a lot of dudes actually need a woman or somebody to keep people on track. Um, to be honest with you, like I said, shit was already gone before I even came in the scene because I was a goer. Like, I was the person that was in the crowd. I came with Cooley High. Like, I was pulling up to see Cooley High, experiencing everybody else. So they already was on a roll. I, I mean, I feel like I gave niggas some direction. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I feel like I, feel like I gave, like, that, that mama love. Like, what you doing? Get up. Get up. We, we in the studio. Let's go do this. This is what we're going to do. So, yeah, I mean, I played a major part. And, and as an outsider, I've seen the impact. And it's, it's very subtle. But it's very effective. It's versus when you at a concert and uh, they ain't come out in thirty minutes. Versus no, they're on time. Like uh, this, okay? They at the door. The door looking kind of shaky. You kind of is looking kind of sketchy. Like versus no, everything is on point. And so, a lot of times, artists don't appreciate that subtle thing mm-hmm. that will take them to the next level because they they're so they in front of the camera. They see the, the, the yeah, and it's like. No, it's like it's the little things that get you to the next level. It's not necessarily everybody raps, everybody looks can dress, everybody wants to get gets in front of the camera, but it's the subtle things that allow you to get to that point and make it run smooth to give that real experience. That's mm-hmm. what that's what takes it to the next level. And I, I've seen that from you. Yeah, because I don't be playing. Like, you know, listen, like when I love something, I love it. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not I'm not a type of person that loves something and then go halfway in. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm always all the way in. And I've, sometimes it's like a gift and a curse because I'd be all the way in for something and then somebody be like, oh shit, she all the way in. How could I get over? Mm-hmm. And then it take for me to get like hurt a couple of times for me to realize, like, okay, I'm gonna back out. But you took an L, not me. Cause I'm I'm not gonna like stop, like I'm not gonna stop my passion and my love for something because you cut me. You know what I'm saying? 
it's going to make me stronger. I'm going to pay attention to the signs for the next person. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm always going all in because I'm not going halfway do nothing. Like, mm -hmm. I want to go all the way in. So, I mean, that's just my model, though. Like, I, I always did it for the love. It was never because I wanted no clout. It wasn't because I wanted to wear something nice and be in front of no camera. Because I honestly don't like to be in front of no camera. You can ask anybody that's around me. Like, I really, the nigga pull out a camera and be like, let me take a picture. I'd be like, oh, do I really have to? They'd be like, nigga, you Betty, you Betty. Like, you have to take that. I'd be like, I really got Chandra. Could you talk for me? And then I started to realize that it's my brand. Like, I, it's mine. So I got to be in front of the camera. I really love to push put people in the forefront. Like, have you heard of such and such here? Like, hold that. Like, you know what I'm saying? And then I enjoy watching that. Like, I've always wanted to be a rapper, a singer, a painter. Like, I love the arts. And because I don't know how to do none of that, and I know how to do the business side, like, you got me. Like, you know how to draw? Yo, so-and-so, no. like, that's me. Mm -hmm. Like, look at this person. Mm -hmm. They're great. Like, here, how can I make sure that y'all know that this person is great? I've always been that way. Always. Sorry. Do you have any? Last one. What has been so far your most memorable spotlight series? I can't wait after most people, but for you, what's the most memorable? My brother Gaines. I just feel like when Gaines did a spotlight series, I felt like Gaines gave me like his like soul. Like down to when he was talking, like when he was reciting his lyrics, like I felt like he literally gave himself. Like he, when he was talking in his songs, it's like it was the first time we all sat there and was like, damn, nigga. Like even though I was with you when you went through that, like you really made me feel it. Like mm -hmm. he was just giving me his all. Like he just was like, yo, sis, I got you. And then when he got in that position, like I, I will say this. When he did Spotlight Series, it was like he understood the assignment. Like, Gaines was like, oh, you, you want me to tell my story? Cool. Like, I got you. So when, you, when he sat down and he did his songs, and I was like, oh, shit. I, I stepped out. I started to shed a little tear. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because and it was even more personal because I've been through so much with Gaines, like, and I know mm -hmm. so much, and I've watched Gaines grow. For me to be his little sister and to provide that for him, something I always wanted to do for him, and he showed the fuck out, I just was, it was just a beautiful moment. So, like, it was more personal for me. So, that was just like, that's dope. That was it. Man, like I said, shout out to Hitch Bernie, my Red dog. Shout out, got Hitch in the back, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Hosanna. I didn't no, know he was here. Well, Hosanna. that's who it was when I was managing him. So we're gonna give Hosanna that shout out. I love Hosanna. Shout he was Hosanna. he was the first person that believed in me as a manager. <laughs> that was the best. Yeah, so like I like he he kinda like he kinda like opened the door to that like manager thing and he kinda like showed me like the rips and the shakes of all of that shit. And he just put me out there and was like, Look, right. we outside. So like I appreciate it. It was like that was that was one of my greatest moments too, like managing him. And then like my other great, great, great moment was the day that I woke up and was like, fuck that, I'm doing I do so much for other people. Like today is the day that I'm gonna be Betty Crock Entertainment and I'm gonna do my own shit. And I feel like once I woke up and I did that, it's like different. Word. Like I'm living my purpose. Everybody live your purpose. Please, please don't give up. Don't give up. I had discouraging moments. I had times where I felt like because I had kids, I couldn't do certain things or whatever. Shout out to Aliyah and Soleil. I love y'all so much. Them my babies, they be rocking with me too. They be they be telling Word. me well, who I should have on Spotlight Series. <laughs> I be like, baby, I can't get Chris Brown. <laughs> but I'll try. <laughs> but um, yeah, so being a mom and chasing my dreams and like going through everyday life, like I'm just starting to realize that I'm like living in my purpose purpose and I have whatever it come with I'm just got to be ready for it that's all word how did you get to that point I st I hated I st I felt a type of way I kept getting shitted on like like I said I will always give somebody a hundred percent and then once a person got to a point and didn't need me no more they always be like okay all right Neff it was cool and I never had nothing tangible to call mine like, it was always like, Neff, you helped me with this. Thank you. But, like, I'm going to go ahead and move on. Like, I, yeah. I'm, I'm cool. When I started to realize that I was being disposable like that, it hurt me. But at the same time, I was okay with it because I did what I wanted to do. Like, when I was working with that person, I was, I was happy because I was living in what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But it was fucked up because it's like, damn, like, 
I'm, you really did that to me. Like, I really did all of this work for you, for you to turn around and say, like, I don't need you no more type shit. So, whatever. Like, I just was like, when I did, when I have something, I have something tangible now. I'm Betty Crack Entertainment. Spotlight Series is mine. Everything I do from this point is my shit. Talk so shit. now, you're on my shit. And Talk when you shit. walk away, <laughs> it's still my shit. So I'll keep. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Where and one thing I, was, I wanted to mention too is like you you having you being a mom and it's it's so important that like as a parent mm-hmm. like you show your kids like you can chase your dreams you can do your passion mm-hmm. you can live in that shit that's our model yeah and showing that just because you got kids you know what I mean don't give up go go get it yeah. show them that it's possible yeah that's it that's take them to key. your meetings take them to wherever you gotta mm-hmm. go so they can learn that shit because. My daughter wants to own a business now. My do- my Come oldest on. daughter, Aaliyah, wants to own a business. Come and my on. younger daughter wants to be the best dancer in the whole entire world. And I pushed them both to do it. I'm going to pay for this girl to dance. And I'm going to make sure my daughter start her business. Come on, national ch- uh, competition. I love and all y'all. That. I, love, I love No Label. I love y'all. <laughs> we love you too. Uh, A-Team has an event coming up too, right? Yes. The, the A-Team. Event. Yes, yes, yes. October 23rd at Vice. Right, come catch the vibes at Vice. It's going to be R&B. We're doing cover songs. We're going to have some special artists, you know, our favorite artists come shut it down. We're going to be doing the 90s and the 2000s songs. So, y'all definitely need to come out. Tickets is on sale for that, too. And then Spotlight Series is on the 29th. So, I'm taking over with the A-Team. I'm taking over with Betty Crock. So, it's lit. Oh, yeah. Get them tickets on Eventbrite. You know what I mean? No label to pop. We out. Peace. Peace.